so that we uh, might know that you are here. We thank you so much for being here with your mothers, and um, just a blessing to be here in God's house today on Mother's Day. And like I said before, there are going to be a lot of pastors, and you know, you know me, I'm a little bit different than most everybody else. Wouldn't you agree? I know Crystal over here has known me since 19, well, how long has it been? Long time. We've known each other for a very long time. This is her first time here. We praise the Lord for her today. Glad you're here, Miss Crystal. And if I embarrassed you, I'll pay you 20 bucks later. All right, anyway. A lot of pastors are going to probably come out, you know, we're going to talk about the Proverbs 31 woman and all this other kind of stuff. Talk about the, and like I said, extol the virtues of being a mother and how wonderful motherhood is. But I thought something a little bit different today. You know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm heavily into the news. Anybody read the news, watch the news, look at the news, check it out, see all the, all the stuff going on? It's madness, isn't it? I, it is literally madness. When you think about all the terrible things going on, all the craziness just all over the world. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that I directly attribute that to the fall of the home. I really do. The, the home or the, the, the family is the backbone of any society. It's the foundation of any society. And our, our, our backbone, our foundation is severely messed up. Wouldn't you agree with that? I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to be mean. I hate that fact. I don't like it. I don't, I don't boast about it. I think it's terrible. I think it's absolutely awful that families are in disarray. And because families are in disarray, guess what? Churches are in disarray. And because churches are in disarray, communities are in disarray. And because communities are in disarray, states are in disarray. And because the states are in disarray, guess what? The federal government's just off the chart. Wouldn't you agree? And it's not just here in America. I believe it's all over the world. Check it out. If you think I'm lying, tell, I mean, look at the news. Look at all the things going on. When you see women plunging their vans into the ocean so they might kill their children. Imagine such a thing 50 years ago. I mean, what would I think? When you see women uh, drowning their children in bathtubs. You heard the story, right? Am I, am, is this news to you? This isn't something I'm making up or just, you know, huh, that crazy old preacher, he's just way too conservative, right? He, he doesn't know that the times have changed, right? Well, I didn't know that the times changed where murdering your child is acceptable. I, didn't under, I, I, I must have missed that uh, time period. I must have missed that. Something's wrong with me, Brother Scott, I guess. May, I missed it. Something's wrong, ladies and gentlemen, and I directly attribute it to the fact that the family has fallen apart. And so today what I want to talk to you about is more, more than anything, it's kind of, you know how the president has a state of the union address? What I like to do is kind of give you a state of motherhood address, if that's okay. Is that all right with you guys? We're just going to, we're talking about the state of motherhood. I think it's really kind of encapsulated in a portion of scripture that we're going to go to today. And that portion of scripture is 2 Kings chapter 11. 2 Kings chapter 11. All the things that I just talked to you about, the women, you know, driving their vans into the ocean and, and killing their children, I guess, obviously, when we look at 2 Kings chapter 11, is obviously not very new. It's not a new idea, apparently. <laughs> I want you to understand also that Satan behind all this stuff. Whether you want to believe in him or not, whether you want to believe, oh, Satan, what are you, are you crazy? Are you just a crazy person? You think there's a little guy in a little red devil outfit and he's got little horns on him and, and he's got a little tail and a pitchfork. You think that guy's real? No, not that guy. But I know there's a guy named Satan who used to be named Lucifer who the Bible tells us changes himself into a, an angel of light. I know that guy exists. I know there was a guy who said he would exalt his, his throne above God's throne, that he would uh, take everybody with him. I, I know that guy exists. And I know that there is a Satan that who, who absolutely abhors God's creation in man and would love to destroy everything that there is in man and everything that God has created around man. And that's why, he, that's why he's learned over 6,000 years that to deteriorate the family is the first step into deteriorating civilization and any kind of worship or belief in God. You understand what I'm saying? That guy does exist, and I believe he's behind all of it. And because of that, all the things that I just told you are nothing new. He's been around doing this kind of stuff for 6,000 years. He's been around influencing the, the affairs of men for 6,000 years. And so we come to 2 Kings chapter 11, 
where we look at the Bible, and I'm going to read just a couple different verses to you. Look what the Bible says. And when Athaliah, the mother of Az- uh, I'm sorry, Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. Did you see that? She arose, she killed all the seed royal, all the little kids who were in that court. Wow. That doesn't sound very new at all, does it? <laughs> the things I just talked about. But Jeho- but Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her hid in the house of the Lord six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. So here's a woman who has decided that she is going to be the boss, going to be the queen slash king, and she's going to destroy every child that gets in her way of her getting what she wants. That doesn't sound familiar at all to anybody, does it? No. I, I imagine you probably are, are probably... Have you heard the story about how the people in England were taking aborted babies and using them for fuel for the fire for their... No? <laughs> yeah. In the hospitals. In the hospitals. The people who are supposed to be protecting and, and nurturing life were taking life and throwing it into furnaces. No, I can't. That can't happen in this day and age. We're too enlightened. We can't do anything like that. It's amazing what some, th- what some people will do so that they might have their own way. And really, I'll be honest with you, that's exactly what it all boils down to. Wouldn't you agree? It's so I can have my way. I can do what I want. And if this baby, this child, is going to get in my way, then it's just going to have to be eliminated. Ladies and gentlemen, you understand, that is the antithesis of what God intended in a mother. Wouldn't you agree? God intended mothers to be nurturing and loving and kind and sweet. And uh, every time you get into uh, an argument... My mom's going to say, it's okay. Dads, don't you hate that? Any other dad like that? <laughs> it's okay. I know my dad hates it. My dad, after a while, we learned a long time ago, uh, we would, you know, he would say no or something like that, and we'd go to mom, mom say, yeah, it's okay. And then he would be like, he would, he would end every sentence after he had to say no with, if you go to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> he learned after a little while, Amen. If you go to your mother, that's what he had to say after a little while. So he figured that out. Man, and that's what mothers usually do. That when we think of a mother, we think of, oh, the sweetness, the kindness. We think of uh, pink ribbons and bows and all the other junk that we can't meet. Guys just like, oh, oh," you know what I'm saying? That's what we think of when we think of a mother. We think of someone beautiful and wonderful and kind and, and who would never hurt anybody. And now we see in our day and age, mothers who couldn't care less about their children. As long as you're not in my way. It's a sad situation. This Athaliah was exactly the same way. Verse 4, the Bible says, In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers of the hundreds and the captains and the guards and brought them to him to, into the house of the Lord and made a covenant with them and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord and showed them the king's son. And commanded them, saying, This is that the thing that you shall do. A third part of you that enter into the Sabbath shall even be the keepers of the watch of the king's house. And a third part shall be at the gate of Sir. And a third part at the gate behind the guard. So shall you keep the watch of the house, that it be not broken down. And two parts of you shall go, that shall, shall go forth on the Sabbath. Even they shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord about the king. And you shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapons in his hand. And he, he that cometh within the granges, let him be slain. And he that he be with you, with the king, as he goeth out, as he cometh in. And the captains over the hundreds, and did according to all the things that Jehoiada the priest commanded. And they took every man his men that were to come on the Sabbath with them, that should go out on the Sabbath, and came to Jehoiada the priest. And to the captains over hundreds did the priests give King David's spears and shields that were in the temple of the Lord. And the guard stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, round about the king from the right to the corner to the temple, to the left corner of the temple, along by the altar of the temple. And he brought forth the king's son, that he, and he put the crown upon him. 
and gave him the testimony. And they made him king and anointed him, and they clapped their hands, and they said, God save the king. So finally, this young king, this little child who was, who was at one time hunted by a woman who should have been a mother figure to him, is now finally king. Six years. You know how old he, became, he was at the time? Seven. Can you imagine hunting a one-year-old? Can you imagine hunting down a one-year-old? A mother, a, la- a lady. I mean, we can almost imagine anything about men, can't we? <laughs> the way sometimes we talk about men on Father's Day, Brother Scott, isn't that right? <laughs> we can imagine a man just being a terrible, evil thing. But men, to think about a mother hunting down a one-year-old baby to kill it. Absolutely mind-boggling. And finally, after six years, this little baby uh, has grown up to, to a point where he can, be, he can assume the role of king. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the people un, into the temple of the Lord. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by a pillar as the manner was, and the princes and the trumpeters and the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets. And Athaliah rent her clothes and cried, Treason, treason! Not, oh, wow, the baby's alive. Everything's okay. Treason. That's what she thought. They kept this baby alive, and that was treason. Does that, doesn't that, does that boggle anybody else's mind when you read that? When you look at that and see that, this woman would, would be saying treason that they kept somebody alive? A baby. Is that the state of motherhood today? Is that the state of motherhood today? I'm not getting what I want. This child's in my way. Is that the state of motherhood today? Let's pray. We'll get right to the message. Father, we love you and thank you so much for our day. Thank you, Lord, for these mothers. God, I thank you that they are of what a godly woman should be. God, I pray that you'd help each and every one of us to strengthen our bond with Jesus. Every one of us to strengthen our bond with our families, Lord. I pray, dear God, Help our families in this day and age. That even though the other families and all the other people in the world are gone nuts. God, I pray that you would help us to be the Christians you'd have us to be. Lord, in here who's never trusted in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. God, let today be the day. Don't let us leave this place without hearing the gospel and being saved. For those of us who are saved, God, help us to make the right decisions, the proper decisions. Help us honor and glorify you. Help us to be the people you call us to be. That we might young women how to be good mothers. That we might show young men how to be good fathers. That we might be an example to this world what you what you thought about when you created us. Lord, please bless these your people. We beg these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, there's two different women here. Now, I want you to understand, there's two different women here, okay? The one is Athaliah. That's the one we talked about the most. She's the bad lady. She's the one who wants to kill everybody who's going to take her power. She's the one who wants to destroy everybody. But there's another lady, too. Her name, and man, it is hard to pronounce. Wouldn't you agree? Jeho- Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, even though she wasn't related to this boy, even though she had no uh, dealings or no bloodline to him, guess what? She still loved him like a mother would. She kept him for years out of the sight of Queen Athaliah. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So even though there may be a, a, a very negative connotation, well, say something. There are still good mothers out there. Amen. Woo! Isn't that great, Brother Paul? There's still good mothers out there. Still good young ladies who want to bring up their children in a nurture and admonition of the Lord. There's still good women who want to teach younger ladies how to be that kind of mother. It's great to know there's still good mothers out there. But unfortunately, it seems as though we are inundated with the bad ones. We're inundated with stories of women who just go off the deep end. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why. But I think it stems from these things, okay? Number one. I want you to notice their decisions. Man, life is full of choices, isn't it? It seems as though we limit ourselves and our choices, don't we? You ever hear somebody say, I have to do that? Have to do that? Somebody say, well, I'm, I'm in this situation. I've got to do that. 
even though you can probably line out 15 other things they could possibly do. Wouldn't you agree? Do you think Athaliah had to kill all those children? You think it was, that was, but it's just mandated. It has to be done. I mean, this, that's, that's the only way out. Right? Wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand something. God gives us choices for a reason. God gives us a choice. You don't have to live in the way you're living. The things don't have to be the way they are in your life. All the decisions that brought you up to this point right now, I've always said it this way. If, if, you're, on the, if you're on the wrong train, when you get to the next stop, get off of it. <laughs> well, I'm on this train. I guess I'm going to have to go to California now. Is that the way, is that the way you, you're really wanting to do things? You're on your way to New York, you think, and you're on this train that's going to California, and you say, well, I guess I'm going to have to stay here. Even though it's going to stop 15 times between there and Cal- I'd, I'd get off that train and go to the one on New York, right? That's, I mean, that's logically the one thing we can do. But our society, it seems like this is just the way it kind of has to be done, and this is the way it's all. Hey, listen, let me, let me tell you something. It doesn't have to be that way. Athaliah made a decision. And I want you to understand this. Many people that... Uh, and I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about abortion a lot today. Okay, so I want you to understand that. That's not a choice. You understand that, right? Hello. It's not a choice. And you say, well, it's easy for you to say you're a you're a you're a man. You don't have to worry about all the. You're not stuck with a kid. Is that how you feel about it? Is that really how you view a child? Is being stuck? Man, is it quiet in here or what? Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a choice. The choice was made when you decided to do what it takes to have a child. You could have probably chose not to do that. But instead, because, well, I decided that I didn't do that, I guess now I'm going to have to do this. No, ladies and gentlemen, that's not a choice. That's a child. That's a child. It's not a choice. It's not a decision. That's a child. Is it a choice to just go around killing people? Well, I mean, you could choose to do that. But there are some ramifications for that, aren't there? There are, I mean, I, I imagine now, to be honest with you, uh, and I know some of you guys are super Christians in here, but I guess if murder was legal, some of you probably murders, wouldn't you? <laughs> some, some people... I, I imagine, because we are all wicked. I know, you, I know you guys don't like to think this, but we have to face our facts. We all are evil. We all, the Bible tells us, all of sin and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. We all know that. And the truth of the matter is, Jesus even said, if you think it in your heart, you've already done it, basically. Isn't that right? And I know none of you super good Christians like Brother Paul over there, he would never, ever think something like that, would you? Absolutely not. Amen. Uh, see, I, I knew we had good deacons. <laughs> Lie in church and stuff. <laughs> if, if, but, if, but if murder was just, not, it wasn't against the law, or maybe it was just a misdemeanor or something like that, we'd probably, hey, there'd probably be a whole bunch of murderers in our church, probably. But let me tell you something. It's not a choice because it's against the law. What do you think murdering a little child while still in the womb is? Is that a choice? Not a choice. This woman decided, she chose that this was the only route she could take. She's going to have to kill all these children because they were getting in the way of her life, of her, what she desired. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate saying this, but the truth of the matter is, when you decide or when you, when you think that abortion is okay, all you're saying is, this is going to get in my way of doing what I want to do. You understand that? You, you, you understand that, right? This is going to get in the way of what I want to do, so, and so I'm, I'm going to go get rid of this. And uh, the world has done a great job of making a child nothing more than a piece of tissue, nothing more than a scientifically just junk. I mean, that's what, and that's what the world has accomplished in our day and age today. The world has accomplished us just thinking of a child as a piece of tissue or a bother. I'm going to show you something in a little, in a little bit toward the end of the message that will brilliantly illustrate that. So Athaliah chose to kill all the children, but Je- Jehoshaphat, she decided to be a real mother. You see, you could actually choose to be a mother, amen? 
all these late-term abortions, if you will, that Athaliah decided to have, Jehoshaphat said, no, I'm going to be this child's mother. I'm going to raise it. I'm going to protect it. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to feed it. I'm going to nourish it. Man, wouldn't it be awesome if we had some women who would say, that's what I want to do? All right, three of you agree with that. That's good. We're in trouble, bro. God. <laughs> it would be awesome. You know, it would be really awesome if some men decided they were going to step up too. Be the right kind of man. Say, I'm going to do what's right for my children. Just being honest, ladies and gentlemen. Athaliah made a wrong choice, but Hosheba, she made a, tro- a proper choice. She made a good decision. Number two, notice also the definitions. You see, the world today likes to take our language. They make a child a choice. You know, you know and, and what do they call themselves who, who, are, who are okay with abortion? They call it what? Pro? No, who are okay with abortion? Pro what? Pro-choice. Yeah, choice. Not pro, they wouldn't call themselves pro-death. They wouldn't call themselves pro-murder, even though that's exactly what it is. Right? If you take that child several months later and decide that you want to kill it, what is it called then? Uh, If you take the same child nine months earlier and you kill it, what is it called then? Choice. No, ladies and gentlemen, all you've done is change a word. You haven't changed the action. You haven't changed the the end outcome. All you've done is change the word. You've changed the definition. And that's the problem. The world today changes definitions. I remember, I mean, one time, I'll tell you guys this, not everybody that has been here all the time, but I went to a church in uh, Brooksville, Brooksville. uh, Brother Chuck Fernandez at the time. And the first thing I got there, I'd never been there before, Never seen those people in my life. I walked up onto the stage. I looked at him. I said, I want you guys to understand something. I am, I am okay with gay marriage. And they looked at me like you're looking at me right now. <laughs> I, I saw some of them pick up some stones. They were about to stone me. <laughs> I said, I am okay with gay marriage. I, I think it's a great idea. And I, they just leave it. I think you guys were there that day. I'm not sure. And it was as silent, you could have on carpet. That's how silent it was. Amen? And then I, when, I said, when I clarified, I said, every marriage between a man and a woman should be a happy one. It took him a little while, you know. <laughs> they got it. They changed the word. That's all they did. Gay used to be happy. Right? Anybody watch the Flintstones? You'll have a gay old time if you watch the Flintstones. That doesn't mean homosexual time. That means happy time, right? The world has changed the, the definitions. The world has changed the words and said, oh, that we're just going to change the words and make it better. No, it's not, gay. it's not gay marriage. Gay marriage should be a happy marriage between a man and a woman. Right, honey? We got a gay marriage. <laughs> We don't have a homosexual marriage. As far as I'm concerned, as far as the Bible's concerned, there's no such thing. Right? There's no such thing. Okay, listen. We have too long allowed the world to change the language and the definitions of what we, what we mean. And so when Athaliah comes out down there, she sees this little child who's now seven years old, and she sees him becoming the king. Rather than being excited that a little child is still alive, she calls it treason. Who was really the treacherous one? Who was the one who really committed treason? After killing everybody who was the heir to the throne, it was her. And let me tell you something, dear friend. In the empire of lies, truth is treason. Wouldn't you agree? And that's the problem. We've allowed everybody to change the words, change the definitions, change what things mean so that we don't even know what things mean anymore. Marriage, family nowadays, is no longer even marriage and family. We have shows like Modern Family on TV. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not family. 
well, we'll just call it what we want to call it. No, no, you won't. That's not what it is. Family is set up by God. You see, when you're the one who creates stuff, you're the one who, who's allowed to, to name it. Amen? Amen? And God is the one who named it. God is the one who gave us family. God's the one who, who is br- brilliant. I mean, if we just evolved and, and just, we would not know what family was. We'd just get whatever we want and, and, and forget everybody else. That's the way evolution, that's the end game of evolution. Just get whatever you want. Make yourself better. That's not what God says. God says sacrifice for each other. God says love people unconditionally. Boy, that sounds a little bit like a family, doesn't it? God says, care about somebody. Take care of them. Help them when they're sick, in sickness and in health. For richer or for poor. That's what God says. God's the one who made it all up. He's the one who gets to define it. So, these two women differed in their decisions. And they differed in their definitions. We've got to figure out what the difference is. Okay? We've got to figure out what the difference is. Brother Je- Brother. Brother Jesse, would you mind doing me a favor? Up there you have a slideshow. It's on Mother's Day. Do you see it up there? Can you click on the second thing of that? Anybody see this girl? She seems like a nice girl, don't she? Her name, Emily Letts. And she looks like a really sweet, wonderful girl. Until, um, uh, go to the next slide. That's Emily, who has decided to film her abortion and put it on YouTube. That's her abortion right there. That's that's her during her abortion. Look how happy she is. Isn't that exciting? I want you to see something real quick. Go to the next slide. This is Emily, what she says. This is her quote. I don't feel like a bad person. I don't feel sad. I knew what I was going to do was right. It was right for me and for no one else. It was right for me and for no one else. That's Emily's, that's Emily's idea of what's best. And unfortunately, there, there are a lot of people in our nation, in our society today, and really all over the world. That is what a mother's idea is. That's the state of motherhood in some people's places right now. <laughs> it was right for me. It was best for me. When Athaliah came out and she just said, treason, treason, this isn't best for me. It's not what I want. And so it's treason. I want to rule. I want to reign. I want to be the one who tells everybody what to do. I'm the, I, I'm the one who is the, the captain of my own life. I'm the boss. That doesn't sound familiar, does it? Does that mirror anything at all? I mean, is anybody else drawing the same conclusion I am? am? It was right for me. It was best for me. And that's the attitude of many of our mothers today. It's best for me. What happened to mothers saying, what's best for my child? What happened to the greatest desire and greatest uh, concern being, what's best for my kids? What's best for my children? How can I help them, my children? Listen, hey, Athaliah's uh, choice was, oh, what's best for me? Whereas Jehoshaphat said, what's best for this child? I will risk my life for this child. You know, if Jehoshaphat had got caught with that kid, where would she be? Dead. Go to the next slide. Does this lady look familiar at all? Casey Anthony. Anybody know what she did? She took her little baby. She put some duct tape around her mouth. Shoved her in the trunk of a car. According to the world today, she was only about a year and a half late. If she had done it a year and a half earlier, she had been fine. She wouldn't have had a trial. There wouldn't have been any news flash. She was early. 
Brother Matt? Is that the state of motherhood today? What I long for is, uh, and what I believe we have here in our church is some mothers who care about their children more than they care about themselves. That's the way God intended it to be. Some dads who cared about their children and their wives more than they care about their own selves. Their idea is not what's best for me. What's going to stop me from having my party life? What's, what's going to ha- stop me from going out when I want to go out and doing what I want to do? And by the way, that's what this world thinks. I'm going to do what I want to do. YOLO, right? You only live once, so I'm going to go do whatever I want to do. And if anything gets in my way, then I'm going to have to get rid of it. And by the way, it's not just abortion. You know how many grandparents are raising their children, uh, grandchildren nowadays? <laughs> I'm just scratching the surface, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to stay here for a couple more hours, we can talk more about it. What's the state of motherhood today? And listen, the state of motherhood in America does not need to be the state of motherhood in Rutland or Inverness or, or where you live. When I, when I'm, I'm a much more individualized person. I believe everybody rises and falls on the merits of their own works, on the merits of their own self. I'm like Joshua. Remember what Joshua said? Choose you this day who you will serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. We don't care what you do. You go out and do it. If you want to go out there and do all that kind of stuff, you go ahead. That's fine. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. And ladies and gentlemen, we, have, we need some mothers. We need some fathers who will say, I know all the other kids' parents are letting them do that. And I know that they get to go out and do whatever they want to anytime. Guess what? The reason why they do it is because they don't care about you. I love you. And it doesn't matter what anybody else is do. As for me and my house, we're going to serve God. And as long as you're in my house, you're serving him right with me. Oh, Brother Jimmy, oh, that, that'll, that'll just cause me more problems because they're going to be meeting. The, you ever hear of a spanking? I've heard of him. I've heard of him. Well, that's just, that's just difficult. What's the difference? We need some women who will be mothers. We'll be, we need some, some men who will be fathers. You want to restore the family. You want to restore this nation. You want to restore your community. It all starts with you. You understand what I'm saying at all today? I, I believe this, though, wholeheartedly. The Bible tells us in Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What? What's that mean? Well, if your family, you have problems with your family, seek God first. You have problems in, in, your, in your finances, seek God first. You have problems in your, in your job, seek God first. You have problems in your church, seek God first. Any problems, all the things that, you're mess, uh, that, are, that are messing up in your life, guess what? God has the answer for it. If you're here today and you've never been saved, I want you to understand. You don't have him. How could you, possi- I mean, how could you possibly expect him to take care of your trials and issues and problems? If you've never trusted him as a savior. If you don't have him in your life. Jesus died, rose again on the third day. And the Bible tells us he lives at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and me. That's those of us who have trusted on him. If you're here today and you never trusted him, trust him. If you're here today and you are saved, are you being the example that these women, these mothers, the people who want to be good mothers, the people who want to be good fathers, are you being the example they need? Are you helping them along? Or are, you, or are you judging every moment that they, that they live? Are you helping them along? Or are, you, are you pointing your finger at them? Or are you, are you taking their hand and saying, come on, I'll show you the way? We need to be the Christians they need to see. Either way, whatever God's leading you to do, maybe God's calling you to join the church, maybe God's calling you to be baptized, be saved, whatever it is. Whatever decision needs to be made, make it today. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you of the day. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. And we pray that you would bless in a mighty way this invitation as we invite